Hello everyone and welcome to Maximize Your Cooking. I'm going to be showing you how to make some hamburger buns. Tomorrow's the 4th of July and I'm gonna, I got a smoker here. I'm going to be making some pulled pork and I want some really good homemade buns to go with it. And since I'm in Germany, buns aren't really that common around here. And they, they sell them but they're terrible. So definitely make my own and it's a really good recipe. I've done it before. I know it's really good turnout and hope you like it. So for this hamburger bun recipe, we're going to need 9 grams of instant yeast. Any yeast is really okay, if you ask me. 425 grams of some lukewarm milk at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit to be exact. 794 grams of some, some, some white flour. If you have bread flour, that works all the better. If you have all-purpose flour, go ahead. It's still going to work. You're going to need 14 grams of some salt. I like to do the measurements for salt especially because when you have when you have kosher salt it's different than when you have like an iodized salt grains turns out better different so it's good to measure that um, 78 grams of some sugar 85 grams of some vegetable oil you can use butter here too and one egg okay to really start this all off I'm gonna take the milk here and put the yeast inside it and give it a little mix and we're gonna let that kinda do its thing for about five minutes just to activate the yeast. However, while the milk and the yeast are getting activated, we can start uh, taking a mixing bowl or whatever bowl we're gonna kind of initiate all this in and put all of the other ingredients in. So we're gonna go in with the flour. And when it comes to the kneading, uh, you know, if you have a mixer, like I'm gonna use a mixer here that's great and you know you don't really have to do it much but if you're gonna mix by hand there are plenty of good videos out there of how to mix uh, or knead bread and kneading bread really is it doesn't really matter exactly how you do it there's no perfect method but what you will end up kneading is a bread that the gluten is really developed in and you can tell when you've really kneaded it enough when it has a certain feel and texture and there are plenty of videos out there to teach you how to do that but that's something I've learned. You just really got to need it a little bit more than you think. And it might be kind of hard, but if you got an electric mixer or power mixer, it's really great. And it's a nice thing to have to, to make your bread. Okay, so now that my, my yeast and milk mixture is all ready to go, it's been sitting around for about five minutes in this lukewarm milk. I'm going to pour that in. And then we're going to go and start kneading this. Okay, so I got my bowl, my mixing bowl, all hoisted up here on this big, huge boy mixer here. And um, it's a little wobbly, this old thing, but it's going to mix the bread up real nice, knead it, and uh, we'll see how it looks in about 10 minutes. We can get an eye of how the dough looks and feels, and we'll see how, how it is. It's been about five minutes here. Kind of how the dough is looking, just to show you. Well, it's been about 10 minutes here. Let's check it out. This is kind of how I know it's done is when all the dough isn't really sticking to the bottom anymore and it's kind of like all mashed up into the dough hook. Okay, so I got the bowl here now and I got a bowl that I'm gonna put all my dough in to ferment overnight. You can divide the dough up into two bowls if you want, if you don't want to have too many hamburger buns. If you cut the, this recipe makes about 16 or so hamburger buns and um, you can even use the other dough for a sandwich loaf. Okay, smells fantastic here. I'm um, just gonna shape this up into a simple ball and just put it right up in here. I'm actually gonna need this. Feels got a nice gluten development here. Definitely helpful to have a little paddle or a pastry scraper, that's what it's called, around for making bread. Alright, so we got a little surface tension on there. It's a nice ball. And believe it or not, this makes quite a few hamburger buns into the bowl, lightly grease the bowl, something I recommend, make it a little easier to come out, 
But uh, yeah, that's gonna go in overnight. You can do it for about, f up to about four days in the fridge for fermentation, but definitely is a good idea to let this ferment overnight at least uh, for flavor development in the stove. Okay, so it's about two and a half hours before I'm gonna bake the bread here, and I'm gonna unwrap this. And I'm actually gonna divide this dough in half because I don't really need a bunch of buns. And I'm just gonna make a sandwich roll with the other one, and the other half. Okay, so I divided it in half, and now what I'm gonna do, you don't have to do this, but assuming you have a scale, um, I'm gonna, oh, each bun's gonna be about three ounces. You can make them a little smaller, a little bigger, uh, which is about 85 grams for three ounces. So I'm just gonna divide them into three, or 85 gram pieces of dough, and then we'll shape them up into balls. Okay, so I got eight pieces of dough here now, and now all I have to do is just shape them each into little balls. It's quite simple. Uh, all you really have to do, I mean, they're all kind of scattered, they're jagged, they really have no definite form. Just start taking it from any side and just take everything with your thumbs and push it all into the middle to get a little surface tension. Try to combine everything down here because this is going to be the bottom. And then just roll it around, uh, depending on how big it is, if you're just using one, these are small enough where you can just do it with one hand and it's no problem. And you just kind of roll it around inside your palm and you can kind of feel the tension build up. And, okay, so I got my eight dough balls here and now simply just take any one of them. And you can do this with your palm if you don't have a roller. I'll show you both. Uh, just flatten it down a little bit. Just like a hamburger bun, super simple. There's really nothing nothing to that at all. And then you can place it right onto whatever sheet you're gonna use. Okay, so I have my buns all shaped up here. I'm just going to put some saran wrap on there and let them rise. Um, it should be maybe two, an hour and a half. Depends how hot it is and in the climate you're in. Okay, so my buns have been rising here for about two hours. My, my oven's all heated up and I preheated it to 350 Fahrenheit. And I'm just going to take off the saran wrap carefully. The buns are kind of delicate right now, so you don't want to degas them. And uh, what you got to do is take an egg white and a couple tablespoons of water and mix it around. That's going to be your egg wash. And I got a brush here, helps to have one. And I'm just going to lightly coat all the, bun all the buns with some of this egg wash. This will help the, this will help give the surface and the crust a little bit of color. And also is really good to help stick the sesame seeds that I'm going to put on on all the buns. Okay, so they're all coated with egg wash now. Um, unfortunately, I don't have regular sesame seeds, so I'm just going to take some toasted sesame seeds and just kind of spr sprinkle them up on top of the buns here. Really go how you like it when it comes to this. Okay, so these are going into a 350 degree oven. Fahrenheit and they're going to be in here for about 15 minutes, 12 to 18 really, but uh, we'll see how they look after about 15. Okay, we're nearing about 14 minutes, 15 minutes, and uh, they're looking good. So I'm going to take them out. This oven's a little bit hot on top, but that's fine. But there they are. That's Those are your buns and now you just got to really just let them cool down and you can slice them up and serve them with anything you like.